In today's video, I'll show you some useful tips in KeyCAD involving hotkeys so you can perform shortcuts faster. This will involve a mouse with a keypad and I'll show you where to buy it and how to set it up. And I'll also show you some useful plugins in which you could make schematics and layouts and double check your work. And finally, we'll discuss some project organization skills that you could use in order to refer back to your project at a later date and have all the information that you need. I want to give JLC PCB a big thank you for sponsoring this video. They allow between 1 and 32 layers of PCBs, assembly, CNC machining, and 3D printing. They also have a video on their website going through the step-by-step -step process of ordering your PCBs. It's very easy and straightforward to follow. Here are some of the boards that I've been able to get done through assembly and just bare boards through JLC PCB. And as you could tell, they're quite good quality. They're cost effective and the shipping services are very fast. They also have on their website the capabilities section going through each and every single minimum and maximum capability that they could do for trace width, spacing, and board size. And along with that, they have a support section in which you could ask them questions and they have a common question and answer section. So if there's any part of the process that you're unsure of, you could just go on their website and read the steps and go from there. So once again, thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video and I hope to use their services in the future. Hotkeys and shortcuts can be a great way of improving efficiency and spending less time looking for different menus in order to perform commands. So one example of this is with the add symbols properties with this little op amp figure here. If we click on this, it will show us all the different symbols that are included in KeyCAD, whether or not they were added by the default libraries or custom libraries that you put in yourself. Now the mouse that I have currently allows you to essentially press a pad on the side of it and get that hotkey instantly, as opposed to remembering keyboard commands or which different menus to go to in order to perform said function. So right now, if I press 6 on my mouse, it'll bring up the symbol properties. And I'm going to show you how to set this up. So if you go under Preferences, followed by Preferences, then go under the Hotkeys menu, you can then see all the different commands that are currently set up for your KeyCAD system. So if I type in the Copy command, right now my Copy command is set to Control c I'm going to change that to number 3 on my keypad. So if I click on the copy line here and then I press 3 on my mouse, 3 is already assigned to delete in the comments section. I'll make that as yes. And then from there I'll click OK. So now if I go to a component here and I click 3, I've copied it. And now if I press 4, that's my paste button. So the reason why you would want to implement this into your projects and use a mouse with keypads is the more time that you could save on creating schematics and layouts, the better off you will be, and that time you could use to perform more research and more experiments involving your projects. As you'll get to a certain point where creating schematics and layouts aren't necessarily difficult, what's difficult is what you're actually putting into those schematics and the theory and thought process behind it. So the kind of mouse that I recommend for this is a Red Dragon M913, any mouse that basically has a 12 pad keypad will work completely fine for this. And the reason why you want to do this is you want to have as many shortcuts as possible without your mouse becoming too much of a hassle or too expensive. They do have cheaper units ranging from 30 to $40, though this is the one that I happen to have and I've been using it for a few years now and haven't had any problems. So this is definitely a recommendation, uh, not a sponsorship, but again, I feel that it will save you a lot of time and effort as opposed to recognizing what each menu is and remembering where it is and what that function performs. So I'm just going to put on here a, on the screen a list of the commands that I use for numbers 1 to 12. And one other thing I wanted to mention that's pretty important with the hotkeys is numbers 10, 11, and 12 are recognized as 0, 1, and 2, not 10, 11, and 12 on the mouse. So you really only get nine shortcuts, but that's still quite a lot, especially considering the fact that there are a lot of shortcuts and menus that you're going to be using over and over again. So again, I'm just going to put this on the screen now. You could use it and change it to your liking, but it's a very simple and straightforward process to set up. Before I show you the plugins that I use, I want to show you how you could take your schematic and output it as a PDF and have it on record or share it to other people if need be. So if you go under File, 
plot. From here, you'll have a plot schematic options menu. Make sure that the output format is set to PDF. And for the output directory, simply put it in the folder that you want to store it in your project. In my case, it's called schematic slash PDF. So I'm going to select this folder, make the path relative, and from there I'm going to click plot all pages. Once this is done, I'm then going to go to the file explorer and make sure that the schematic is readable and that it's in the folder, which in this case it is. So now if you want to print this out or send it to other people or have it for yourself for the future, you can. So that's pretty much all you needed to do in order to change your schematic into a PDF. And then from there, if you go under the main KiCad menu, there is a plugin and content manager. Now the two plugins that I use are the interactive HTML bomb and the board to PDF converter. To install these, simply hit the install button, wait for it to finish. Once it's done, hit apply pending changes. And then from there you go in the layout section. There are other plugins that you could use that involve 3D models and even the manufacturing settings for JLC PCB and PCB way. However, I find them to be a bit glitchy and for smaller projects, I just prefer to do it manually. So once you have these plugins installed, what you want to do is go to your layout editor. From there, go under tools, external plugins, and hit refresh plugins if they're not already there. Once this is done, you now have your interactive bomb and your board to PDF. So we're going to do the board to PDF converter first. These two settings here with the black and white bottom and top layer, we're going to disable these. And we're going to enable the colored bottom and the colored top. From there, we're going to click on the colored top section. And we're going to get rid of the front fabrication layer. So the draw frame on layer needs to be selected to a different layer. It can be anything but the one that you have selected here. We're going to disable that. And for the front silk screen, I'm going to change the color from gray to blue as I find it stands out a bit better. So just select whatever color you want, hit OK. From there, I'm just going to save the current settings that I have. And once this is done, then I'm going to hit the perform button. Now just make sure for the output directory you do the same thing as you did for your PDF that of this schematic you include it in the proper folder. So in this case it's under PCB PDF. So now if I go back to my file explorer here and I go to the project which is right here. I go to the breakout board then project then PCB PDF. We'll see that the assembly file has been created. And from there we could view it. So this is the front copper, which we could see the symbol and the reference designators are all present along with the bottom copper and the back side of it. Another thing that's important to mention is make sure you also disable the front fab layer as you don't want the actual component values to show up on your PDF of the PCB. But that's pretty much all you need to do for this. You can Adjust it as you like with the templates and along with the layers that you want and the colors that are selected. So there's a lot of free range for this and room to customize it as you see fit. The other plugin that's pretty important that I use a lot is the interactive HTML bomb. So here if you go under HTML defaults, we're going to make it bomb left, drawings right, layer view front and back, keep everything else as default. In the fields menu, I just want the value, digikey link, part number, and price to show up. And I'm going to blacklist the test point as even though, yes, it is considered part of the PCB, it's not an actual component. It's not something that I'm going to be purchasing, but rather something that is just made on the board when it is manufactured and assembled. So once this is done, just make sure that you have the proper directory. Once again, this just depends on what folder you want it in. So in this case, I have it in a folder called BOM. And from there, you're just going to click Generate Bomb. And what it will do essentially is it will open up a new tab showing you the reference, value, part number, price, and DigiKey link. So this is pretty much all that we want for this board. Now this board in particular is more so just a test project. I'm not actually releasing it. It's just for demonstration, but this gives you a good idea of what to expect when putting your boards together. Say, for instance, you order this board and you put it together by hand. Now you have a checklist for parts that are sourced in place. 
That way you don't lose track. And simply by saving it, it will update the file that you put in the folder every time. So this is just a really good way of getting a visual representation of a checklist for your parts and your schematic and make sure that everything is included in your project. Project organization is a very useful skill to have for PCB designs as you need to be able to identify and distinguish different aspects of your project accordingly so that if you need to share said information with other engineers or reference it at a much later date, you need to be able to do this easily. So what I like to do is have a folder for the bill of materials, a folder for the manufacturing files. This usually includes the CPL and Gerber files. And then I like to have a folder for the project itself. In the project folder, I keep a folder for custom components that were not included in the original symbol library of KiCad. I have a PDF version of the PCB and schematic. And if needed, I have another folder in which I include an Excel file with all my calculations. Usually I use these Excel files for buck or boost converters. Again, this will save you a lot of time in the future. And if you ever want to use your project, say for instance, for other projects that you're working on, you can simply take original symbols and footprints that you used and use them again in another project to save you time. So by having this organization skill early on, you're essentially removing a lot of the headache that comes along with making your own circuit boards. So this is just something that I wanted to emphasize and um, you know, make the point that spend the extra time to make your project as professional as possible. Obviously, at some point you have to finish the project and move on, but the more work that you put into it, the better the result will be. As always, thank you all so much for watching. We recently just broke 200 subscribers, and thanks to all the recent support, I was able to get a sponsorship from JLCPCB. I will be making a video on digital potentiometers soon. I'm just in the process of working through the code and understanding the datasheet better. But as always, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.